Hey everybody, today is October 26, 2016 and it is pretty much the end of the season for my pepper growing outside. So we're going to do an experiment with the colder temperature. I'm going to attempt to grow some lettuce, tatsoi, and just for fun I'm going to add some basil. And this will be grown outside in a hydroponic setup. It's mainly going to be a cracky system, but I do have a solar pump that I may try to see how well this will work. First, what I'm going to do today is start some seeds. Starting seed is probably the easiest because it's, uh, it doesn't require much and it's very, very simple. What I'm going to do is start seeds in rock wool. Here I have my rock wool cubes already soaked in just plain water for my tap. What you want to do is allow the rock wool to soak up as much water as it can. Then we're going to place that in this container. This is a salad container from Wendy's. And what we'll do is take the rock wool out of here. Allow the water to drip because you don't want the excess water. So what we're going to do is start six of these seeds. And uh, before we do that, we need to make a diagram. All right, that is my awesome drawing. That would be my diagram for these right here. What I'm going to do is two tatsoi, two, two tatsoi, basil, two lettuce, basil. So here are my seeds. These are the ones that I grow uh, in my garden last year. And I give a ton of these away every year, so I may do it again next year. So we'll see. The so seeds are very small. So you only need a few seeds per cell. Oh, that's probably too much, but that's fine because I got a ton of these seeds. Then we'll do two lettuce. Lettuce seeds are very, very small, and I don't know how old these are, so I'm gonna put a few per cell. That way I can secure that something will grow. But typically you need about two to three per cell and that should be enough. Okay, and then these two will be basil. And the basil seeds are also very small, so we'll do a few of those per cell. Once the seeds are all in there, you just want to kind of give it a little bit of water just to wash it down. Okay, and then we'll close this up. You don't have to close it completely, just just squeeze the, the hole closed a little bit. There's a cool little diagram here, tatsoi, lettuce, and basil. Okay, and then we'll have this on top to keep the moisture in. And that is how we start seeds. It should take about four to five days for these to come out of the the hole so I'll come back once these sprout it and show you what it looks like and then we'll go to the next step in the meantime I'm going to place my seeds right under this arrow garden because there's an extra space right there so this is where it's gonna go all right that's all for now all right guys check this out today is October 29th and we have some progress on the tatsoi the rest are still nothing happening but these guys because the seeds are very fresh I harvest them fresh every season so that's why they sprout much faster and the rest are just nothing's going on so I, I place too many seeds per pocket so I'm gonna have to thin these out and just allow maybe two for now and then as they get bigger I might just thin them out to just one but right now um, they're about one two three four five or so per okay today is November 3rd and I have more plants that have started to sprout so these guys are pretty leggy now and uh, there were a bunch of them so I moved them out I'll show you uh, where I moved them in a second and here are the lettuce they're looking great just came out of the rock wool so I will be leaving these here for a while until I see roots uh, coming out of the bottom with these rock wool and then I will transfer them and here are the basil purple basil are coming out looking good 
So this is the time when I started feeding them half strength of uh, my hydroponic nutrients. Whatever you choose to use, just mix half strength and that should be good to go. So for the tad soy that I pulled out, basically when they were young, I just yank them out and then I place them in the soil and check this out. <laughs> That's how many of these were in there. I mean, these were really fresh seeds, so they sprouted like in three days. And I left two, but I will probably be removing one, just leaving um, a single one per cell, and then I will transfer that into the hydro hydroponic system. And it's looking very leggy, but that's fine. Um, I will fix that problem later, and I will show you how I do that as we go along. Again, here's what the others that I pulled out look like. And as you can see the difference, this is because I have been, been feeding this half strength nutrient. So it grows pretty quick. And this one is just in soil and I left it outside. And there we have it. So um, I'll come back in a few days and uh, once this is ready to transplant and then I'll show you what happens next. All right guys, today is November 9th and it has been a while since uh, I started these seeds. I've been a little bit busy so I let these guys grow a little bit more than I would like and they're also very stretchy because the light I'm using is not very good. The basil is not ready but I will go ahead and transplant the rest into my hydroponic system and leave it outside and then once these are ready I may transfer those outside if they make it in time because it's getting pretty cold right now so let's go ahead and move them okay here's my container this is what i'm going to use for my hydroponic system so i have six stations but i'm not going to use all of them and for the one that i'm not using i'm going to cover it up with uh, just solo cup that way it can block the hole and not allow anything to fall through or, or get in so i put red solo cups there for just as placeholder and for nutrients, I'm going to use the Maxi Grow. If you don't know how many gallons your container takes, just use a gallon jug and fill this up with water and then pour it in here. For my container here, it uses two and a half gallon. You don't have to use a pH measure because this nutrients has a pH buffer. So if your water is around where mine is, uh, like 7.8 or so, uh, it'll take it down to around 6 for uh, one tablespoon per every gallon. Here's my container with warm water because the nutrients dissolve better in warm water. So there it is. Let's add three tablespoons. It comes with a really nice handy measure. So that's one, two, and three. Now you want to stir this up really well. All right, once you have stirred it all really nice and well, we're going to add this into our container. And then mix it up really well. Okay, now we can add our plants. So what we'll do is add the lettuce to these two middle. Just drop it in. You see there are multiple plants per container. I'm just gonna thin one out. If you don't damage too many of the roots, you can actually grow it in a different container. So that's where I'm going to put these. I'll go ahead and do one basil as well, just, just to have. The one last thing we'll have to do is we'll add some these pebbles.
the pebbles is to prevent algae from growing onto the rock wool and also you see, see how it helps the plant stand up okay I'm done so I'm gonna take this to the final resting spot and then I'll show you alright guys here's where it's gonna be it's just sitting here on my raised bed because this raised bed is just prepared and nothing's gonna be in there for now except a few plants that I just throw in there for fun so there's where it's gonna be and then the two that I pulled out the same as those that's where they're gonna be sitting and then the base of I don't know what to do with it so I'll just go ahead and throw that in there alright guys so there it is we'll come back in two weeks and show you some updates that's all for now Alright, today is November 30th and it has been exactly three weeks since we transplant the plant into this system. Um, before we go into the details of the system, let me show you something else. Remember these two plants that we pulled out of the rock wool before transplanting? I placed them in soil and they're growing very nicely. And then the rest of these are the younger ones that I pulled out earlier in the video when we were starting seeds that I have in those uh, orange container and I place them now here as well and they're doing very very well now these should grow much faster but because it's uh, very late in November so the condition is very cold so they, they don't grow as fast as they should same thing with the hydroponic okay so both of my basil die both of them didn't make it because they don't really like uh, cold condition the lettuce is not doing too well, but it's still uh, growing. And the best looking plant is the tad soy. And here's my solo power uh, water pump. And let me show you how it works. It's just, it uses, if, you, if there's sun, it'll work. You see that there? So it just pump bubbles into the system. Um, if these were back uh, uh, in the 80s degrees Fahrenheit, it will grow much much faster but because it's so late in November the condition is very cold so these things don't grow as fast as they should and there's a few times that it had rain in the past week so I had to take this out of the uh, outdoor and put it under a cover place so that the rain water does not get in and I switched out the nutrients one time so uh, there you have it guys, a solar power hydroponic outdoor in late November. Uh, it's not doing as well as I expected because uh, of course plants grow better in warmer climate, especially these. These can handle really cold, cold climate but uh, of course they just grow faster in when it's warmer. Alright guys, there you have it, a solar power hydroponic outdoor in late November. Uh, it's not growing great, but it's still doing fine. So it's a fun experiment to do So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below if you want to know more about this hydroponic uh, solar power pump uh, Please uh, ask below and I'll be happy to answer it. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Please like comment and subscribe